Hi, in this video I will show you how you can empower a large language model like GPT-4 using LangChain. For example, with LangChain you can connect GPT to your own knowledge base that was not trained into the model. I will first explain the basics of why this is done and how it's implemented in theory. After that, we will look at the code hands-on. To make it easier to understand, let's take a fictional example. We have a knowledge base of, let's say, 100 texts and we want to make these available to other people and through GPT-4 generate human-like messages with it and not just query the facts out of these text files. The problem is that the prompt or the message you give to the bot can only have a certain number of words or tokens. So you have to pre-filter large datasets. This is ideally done with semantic filtering and that's where vector databases come in handy. They check questions for similarities to data in the database and the most similar data is given back as output. This reduced output is then sent again as a prompt. Let's now take the perspective of a developer. As a developer, we initially have only these text files, but of course, we can also have other sources of knowledge like PDFs or CSV files. With text files, it's relatively easy to extract the data. With PDFs files, it's more difficult. Once we have extracted the data, we cannot just feed it into the database, but we now have to split it into small parts, so-called chunks. For example, if we have 10,000 words, we split them into groups of 100 words. We now have 100 chunks at the end. Okay, now we have a lot of chunks, and these chunks have to be converted into so-called embeddings. But what are embeddings? I show you this on the OpenAI website, which gives a pretty good overview. So I'm here at the OpenAI website, and this gives a pretty good overview, I think. On the left here, you've got the text, or the text chunks, better said, and these are feeded into an embedding model. The embedding model takes the input text and converts it into a vector. And as you can see, the vector is just a bunch of numbers, an array of numbers, or a list of numbers, and these vectors are stored in the database. And as you can see here, these vectors have a meaning and for example anything associated with animal is stored here in this vector space and anything associated with athlete is here and then you run a query for example what is an elephant and the elephant um, gets also converted or the query gets also converted into a vector and now you retrieve similar vectors from the database so this is the semantic filtering I introduced at the beginning of the video. And let's say you get back the top four vectors from the database and these vectors get translated back into text. And now you take a question and the text which you retrieved from the vector database and take it as a prompt to ChatGPT, for example. Okay, that was the theory. Now we will go into the code and I will walk you through the code, what you can do, how you can create a vector database and how you run queries on it. Okay, I'm here now at my IPython notebook. You can also get it on my GitHub page. You will find the link in the description. And what I first do is install LangChain. This is a package which allows us to use yeah, vector databases and also OpenAI to run queries very easily. This is very nice and handy packages and I show the basics here what you get from the package. You also need OpenAI and you need an OpenAI API key. This is the only prerequisite here which you have to have, otherwise the notebook will not work because I use OpenAI for my embedding model. I also need Pickle and this is done to deserialize and serialize our vector database. We'll use Fice, which is built by Facebook. We also will install python.env because I store my API key inside this .env file and because I want not to <laughs> show it to everybody and I will just load it um, after initializing or installing the packages. So this is what we first do. We install LangChain, OpenAI, Pickle, and Python.env. And after this is done, I will load my API key in the variable API key. So, okay, after loading the API key, we can now take a look at the first concept of LangChain. And these are so-called loaders. Loaders are a class which allows you to use your database or your text sources and convert it or put it into a database. 
There are a lot of different loaders like text loaders, P PDF loaders, CSV loaders and so on. And I've got here the FAQ files and these contain some text about a uh, yeah, fictive animal. And this is a mixture of a uh, rabbit and a dog. This is done to make sure that the query I use against my database is not created by GPT, but actually retrieved from my database because GPT will not make up this animal. So to load the data first, we have to import the directory loader and text loader. I use the directory loader because everything in this FAQ text file is a uh, text and I can just use the path here and then use a loader class and the loader class is a text loader. And I also will show my progress and then load it into memory. So after doing this, you can see that um, three of three files are loaded and these are stored into this docs variable now. So three files because we've got three text files in this FAQ directory. After loading the data in, inside memory, we now have to split it into so-called chunks. And there are very nice uh, text splitter. There are different kinds of text splitters. I use the recurs recursive character text splitter here. And I will say that I want a chunk size of 500 words or tokens. And I also want a chunk overlap of 100 because I don't want to lose the context of the chunks. So these have some kind of overlap. Okay, after initializing or after instantiating the class, I will now split the documents which are stored in this docs variable. When I run this code, you can now see uh, this is ex extracted here from the text file and has a chunk size of 500. So now we have our chunks loaded and we, need, we now have to use our embeddings. And from Langchain, you can use different embeddings classes and I will use OpenAI embeddings. So I will just import it here and instantiate it with the OpenAPI API key. And the value here is my API key, which I loaded here from my .env file. So I've got the instantiated class now, and then we need to use or load the chunks into a vector database. There are different kinds of vector databases I can use here with Langchain, and I will use Fice and import the Fice class here. So now from Fice, I have a class method from documents, and I will use the documents and the embeddings instance, and this will create a vector store. And this vector store can be pickled or dumped here, and I now have the data store here on my file system. So now I have a vector store and the vector store can now be used to run our queries and operations on the store. Okay, now we can just load our vector store again and put it inside memory. Okay, now we can send a question to GPT, but you don't just put a question there, you give more. And the more is actually the context. So the context in the question is called the so-called prompt. So you give the bot or the GPT model an identity. And I would say you are a veterinarian and you help users with uh, their animals. And then you put your answer here. And everything uh, together is called the so-called prompt. And you can get a nice prompt template from Langchain and you instantiate it with context variables, uh, the context variable here and the question. This is a, the whole template. So this is fixed and this is the uh, variables and you put it here. And now we have our prompt template. So and this prompt template can now be used in a so-called chain. You can get different chains for different use cases like chatting or retrievals from Q&A. And I will use the retrieval Q&A chain because we will make a query to our uh, database and then put this output to a model. And this is very nicely done uh, with the uh, retrieval Q&A chain. And we first have to initialize or instantiate our model. And I will use OpenAI here and just put the OpenAPI key here. And now we have our LLM, our large language model. And this is put as variable into the chain. And now you also have to put a retriever here and you can convert the vector store to a, a retriever. And if you run now the whole chain, 
you get the LLM which will be used and you also will use the data store here. So I will run the query, how old does these animals get? And GPT will answer this for me. So first I have to run the template of course, and then run the chain. So, okay, now we have an answer. And as you can see, uh, this is nicely formatted and it is information which gets actually retrieved from the Q and A's. And this is not made up by GPT. Okay, but now we have a little problem or sometimes at least we have a little problem. And this is if we run multiple queries, we also, we always have to give the correct question here, but the context of the whole conversation gets lost. And this is where memory comes very nice in handy. And the memory stores the whole conversation and uses the memory for input in the OpenAI prompt. Langchain provides multiple memory classes, for example, the conversation, a buffer memory, and you give a memory key like chat history and an output key. And you also say you want to return the messages from the memory. So I now create the instance of this conversation buffer memory and we use a different chain now because the um, retrieval QA chain is, is not able to use memory, but the conversational retrieval chain is able to use it. So we do the same, we instantiate it with a model text DaVinci model. This is a model which um, is perfect for text creation and we give it a little bit of temperature which says how dynamic the model will be and also memory now as input parameter. And if you run multiple queries like here, how old does the animal get? And now how much does it eat? And the it in this case, gets um, retrieved from the memory or interpreted, interpreted from the memory because otherwise uh, GPT would not know what it actually means. So it has to have the memory in this case. So if we run this, okay, and here you can see it. It's um, a ein Huninchen or a mixture of dog or rabbit uh, should only eat a little bit of food. And so the it is interpreted correctly. Okay, that's it. As you can see, Langchain is pretty easy to use and very powerful. And if you liked my video, please don't forget to subscribe and like my video. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.